The Kriegsmarine in the last stages of the Second World War employed several midget submarines and explosive speedboats. These vehicles are often called desperation weapons, like the Bieber midget submarine you can see here. Yet other navies like the Royal and Italian Navy made use of similar vehicles as well and earlier. So is the notion of desperation weapons for the Kriegsmarine justified here? Well, let's take a closer look. Although the Kriegsmarine possessed battleships, cruisers, destroyers, e-boats, submarines and even an unfinished aircraft carrier, the Graf Zeppelin, it was clearly lacking behind in terms of midget submarines and similar weapons. This becomes even more apparent since its ally, the Italian Navy, employed similar measures very successfully. On December 19th, Italian frogmen in one of the boldest operations of the war penetrated the British naval base at Alexandria in Egypt, attached mines to the hulls of the battleships Queen Elizabeth and Valiant, and blew them up. Although the Germans were clearly aware of this success by the Italian Navy, there was no interest of the Kriegsmarine's leadership developing similar craft or operations. Yet this did change over the course of 1943, in which the greatest success and the greatest losses of the U-boats were mere meeks apart. In the first 20 days of March 1943, the U-boats came nearest to the aim of interrupting the lines of communication between the old and the new world, when they sank 39 merchant ships out of four successive convoys. Yet only a few weeks later the battle in the Atlantic looked quite different. By any measure, May 1943 was a catastrophic month for the U-boat fleet. No fewer than 41 submarines were sunk, the single highest loss rate of any month in the war. On May 24th, Dönitz admitted tactical defeat and recalled the wolf packs from the mid-Atlantic. As such, since June 1943 the German Navy thought about harassing the enemy with small unit operations. This led to the specifications for a midget submarine or a one-man torpedo, which should have a submerged range of 200 nautical miles and a crew of one to three men. Yet before the Germans could make any use of their own midget submarines, the Royal Navy struck the Tirpitz in Norway with the X-Craft midget submarines in September 1943. Although the hull of the Tirpitz was mostly intact, the fire control system and machinery were damaged enough to put it out of action for several months. By fall 1943, the situation for Germany had changed severely. As previously mentioned, the battle in the Atlantic shifted in May 1943. Similarly, in May 1943, the Africa Corps surrendered, which was followed by the invasion of Sicily in July 1943, which subsequently led to Italy dropping out of the war in September 1943. Meanwhile, on the Eastern Front, the German summer offensive Operation Zitadelle in July 1943 failed and was followed up by successful assault offensives. Still, the Germans held on to a large area of extensive coastlines, something I discuss in more detail in this video, which you can find on my second channel. Hence, the German leadership was concerned more and more about defending against an invasion. On January 1944, the commander-in-chief of the Kriegsmarine, Grand Admiral Dönitz, presented Hitler with the plan for the construction of small submarines and one-man torpedoes, which were to be used mainly as defensive weapons against enemy landings. Hitler expressively endorsed these plans. Soon afterwards, in April 1944, the Kriegsmarine launched one-man torpedoes against the forces at the Allied beachhead at Anzio. Now it is important to understand that the Kriegsmarine's one-man torpedoes or human torpedoes were different to the Japanese Kaiten torpedo. Whereas the Kaiten contained the warhead itself, the German human torpedoes had a second torpedo attached to them that contained the actual explosive ordnance. Yet back to Anzio. Of 23 one-man torpedoes, only 13 returned. There were reports of hits on enemy ships, but those were all wrong. Furthermore, the Allies captured one craft intact, and as such it could be used to devise countermeasures. During their landings in Normandy in June 1944, the Kriegsmarine was not able to use any of these crafts in substantial numbers, since most of them did not reach the front lines in time or at all. Yet the situation after the successful landings of the Allies in Normandy led to an increased use of midget submarines. Not because they were particularly successful so far, but at this point it was obvious to the Kriegsmarine's leadership that due to the naval and air superiority the only chance to engage the Allied supply shipping was with midget submarines and similar craft. Additionally, the argument was brought forward that the Kriegsmarine possessed a large pool of well-trained reserves. Furthermore, the leadership was willing to tolerate high losses. Admiral of the small naval combat forces high was obviously also prepared to calculate large losses from the outset. As can be seen from this juxtaposition. 
If, for example, 30 soldiers are deployed with 30 torpedoes against an enemy ship and only one hits the target with the weapon, so that the enemy loses his ship and the multiple of our own losses, then this deployment is justified and the investment is still less than that of all other weapons. Furthermore, he made a distinction between the different crafts that were used. He noted two different kinds. A. Weapons in which a reasonable effort is made to give the operator the opportunity to come home or save himself. This includes all previous weapons of the small naval combat forces. The least possibility of coming back is with the Italian one-man storm boats. B. Weapons in which the soldier deliberately sacrifices himself for a worthwhile cause. These weapons could be of much better tactical qualities and could be much easier to produce than the other weapons under A, but require the appropriate combatant ready for total commitment. As such, I think it's quite appropriate to use the terminology of desperation weapons here. Now a short overview of the different kinds of weapons used by the small naval combat forces. Note that some of them were heavily influenced by Italian and British designs. First we have the one-man torpedo. As already mentioned, they were different from the Japanese Kaiten torpedoes. There were basically two different ones. Both could carry one torpedo, one could not dive at all, and the other could only submerge for a short while. In total around 500 of both of them were built. Next are the midget submarines. These carry two torpedoes, with the exception of the Hecht, or Pike in English, which never saw combat and was only used for training. Most of them only had a crew of one man. Only the Seehund, or Seal, which was the largest, had a crew of two men and it could also be used for transporting goods. Note we take a closer look at the Bieber midget submarine later. Now of all these submarines around 1000 were built in total. Next are the unmanned explosive boats. There were two variants, a command boat and a combat boat. During operations they usually operated in a group of three boats, one command boat and two combat boats. The combat boats were equipped with an explosive charge of around 300 kg at the beginning of the operation, these craft were manned. But in the last stages, the operator would jump into the water. Then the man of the command boat would steer the radio control combat boats into the targets and also rescue the guys in the water. Note that these operations were usually performed at night and in total around 1150 were built. The manned explosive boats had a crew of one or two men. Some of them were copies of Italian explosive boats. In this case, men jumped off the boat in the final stages of the approach. Around 150 of these were built. Now before we take a look at the operational use, losses and successes, let's take a closer look at the Bieber or Beaver in English, which was a midget submarine. As you can see here, this submarine is not particularly large. Quite interesting is the fact that its propeller is smaller than those of the torpedoes it carried. The craft itself was likely inspired by a British Wellman submarine that was captured in Norway. The Bieber has a length of 9 meters and a width of 1.5 meters. Similar to regular World War II submarines, it had a diesel engine for surface movement and an electric engine for submerged movement. The respective speeds were around 6.5 and 5.3 knots. The submerged range of 6.5 knots was 100 nautical miles whereas the submerged range was 8.5 nautical miles at 5.3 knots and an additional 8 nautical miles at 2.5 knots. It was equipped with two 53.3 cm electric torpedoes. The bow of the Bieber was intentionally designed for better stability on the surface. Some of the major drawbacks of the Bieber submarine were as follows. Control and trim cells had been dispensed with. The ballasting had to be done with fixed ballast before the start of the ride. Weight and trim changes occurring during the trip had to be compensated either dynamically or by partial flooding of the diving cells. A real underwater trip at periscope depth was hardly possible. An attack could only be carried out during a surface voyage. The diving process was practically the defensive reaction to attacks. Another major problem was that the sub was only operated by one man, who had to perform all kinds of tasks simultaneously. To give you a basic idea on what that meant, for example, when diving, the operator had to ventilate the front dive cell, ventilate the rear dive cell, lay down the rudder, turn off the gasoline engine and turn on the electric engine, close the exhaust and supply air valves. And remember, diving the submarine was a defensive maneuver, so there was already quite some distress going on. Now a short look at the various operations performed by these craft. For June to August 1944, we have the data for 9 operations. The total number of crafts used was about 
40 command boats, 4 unmanned explosive boats, of which 20 were lost. Note that the reports only give the numbers of the command boats, not the combat boats. In terms of one-man torpedoes, 158 were used with a loss of 106 of these craft. And there was only one operation noted with 14 beavers, which had zero losses. Yet what about the damage these operations caused to the Allies? Well, in total they sank 3 minesweepers, 1 trawler, 2 landing craft, 1 small steamer. Additionally, they damaged 1 escort destroyer, 1 light cruiser, 2 transport ships and 1 block ship. Now it is important to note here that the wartime reports included far higher and optimistic numbers. For instance, there is one operation in which it was reported that 9 ships were sunk but none of them could be verified. This likely was one of the reasons why these operations were continued until the end of the war. Until the end of the war there were still numerous operations of these weapons, whereby the miniature submarines of the Sehun SEAL type were even used for supply trips to the Dunkirk fortress. But overall their success in sinking remained limited and by no means met the expectations that Dönitz had placed in this naval weapon. To summarize, the Germans were rather late when it came to the development and use of midget submarines. Only after the very high loss of the U-boats in May 1943 and Germany being on the defensive on all fronts in fall 1943 was a strong effort put into the use of midget submarines and similar naval craft. The idea of using them against naval invasions was good on paper, yet generally the results were rather lackluster. And if we look at other navies like the Royal and Italian Navy, there were successful examples in the use of these craft. I highly suggest you watch Jachi Niffel's discussion on these craft by the different navies here. And if you're not so subscribed to his channel yet, well, now it is the time. Well, if you like well sourced content like this, consider supporting me. As always, source are listed in the description. Thank you for watching and see you next time.